virtual girls have taken over the world by storm as influencers, idols, and VTubers become some of the richest and most followed personalities in modern culture. Ranging from Instagram models, computer synthesized singers, VTubers who delude parasocial relationships via live streaming, we are obsessed. But what does all of this say about modern day culture? Are we replacing so-called real girls with idealistic, unattainable standards? And should we be scared what it eludes when it comes to the future of human relationships and at the extreme population levels? Today, we're deep diving into one of the most controversially relevant topics that I care about, virtual girls. I'm Fia and I'm a self-proclaimed virtual YouTuber. I made my avatar about three years ago without really knowing anything about VR or VTubing because I just found the idea of taking my physical self and converting it into a virtual one to be really entrancing. But after making the most viewed VTuber tutorials on YouTube and being part of the first wave of them to pioneer the normalcy of representing yourself in a virtual avatar, I feel like I've really gained an extensive amount of insight as to the reasons why we're so obsessed with virtual characters and why everyone nowadays seems to want to be one. There's a lot to cover here, and you can tell I really love this topic because it was the main focus of my very first video on this entire channel. We're gonna dig deep into this one pretty hard, laying out all the good, the bad, and the ugly through my own personal lens to evaluate what virtuality means right now and the potentials of how it will shape our future. 1932, a 100-pound plaster mannequin was sculpted by Lester Gaba, a retail display designer in New York City. She was deemed Cynthia, and had an appearance so realistic with human imperfections that when she was posed around the city in public places, luxury brands were sending her fashionable outfits and jewelry for her to flaunt. She was being featured in big time magazines, getting fan mail, and even attending royal weddings. This was a mannequin, a deliberately cultivated shadow living the life of a human celebrity. Although clearly lacking the aspect of, well, Pixels, <laughs> this was a clear demonstration of our potential to idolize women who aren't real. But as we fast forward through the past century, we watch celebrity persona obsession hurl past political leaders into rock stars, movie stars, and eventually online influencers. In 2007, Japan's very own Krypton media company birthed life into what is still one of the most widely known virtual girls, Hatsune Miku. most widely recognized Vocaloid, a vocal sound bank that can be purchased and used in music production softwares like an instrument, where anyone can fine tune the voices to sing or speak however they want. As I'm sure you're well aware, the fact anyone could get their hands a hold of Miku and use her character with full commercial rights led her to exploding in popularity. Within just a few years, she was topping charts and performing live concerts as a hologram in conjunction with some of the most popular Vocaloid producers. And as we'll discuss shortly, you'll see this won't be the only time Japan pioneered a virtual girl phenomenon. <laughs> YouTube was definitely one of the leading factors in Vocaloid popularity, as it was just starting to hit off in the late 2000s. But outside of Nika Nika Ni anime waifus, we see characters like Ami Yamato in 2011 begin their YouTubing careers. She wasn't trying to be a worldwide pop star, but rather a pretty normal girl doing pretty normal girl on YouTube things like vlogs and makeup. This was also the year that Twitch, originally Justin.tv, was published, which we'll also mention in a bit. But only a few years later, we see what I would consider the first wave of the current virtual girl obsession. In 2015, one of the most well-loved characters of all time made their first YouTube vlog, Barbie. Officially marking being a YouTuber as every kid's dream job, I guess. The Miwaka Whip, original dressing. A stable character from the 50s reimagined as a post-2000s virtual influencer. Not bad looking for being in her 60s. <laughs> but 2016 rolls around and we meet the virtual Instagram star, Lil Michaela. What's up, homies and haters? It's your girl, Michaela. The ethnically ambiguous model was a hot talking point as brands started pouring money into her the same way, if not more so, than other celebrity social media product placement stars. Her realism in photos was shocking at the time, and she's even pulled off a full-on music career. Unlike most of the virtual girls thus far, Lil Michaela's appeal really stems from her realistic appearance, bringing her in the mainstream interest that the cartoon-looking and anime-style girls just can't. Well, at least at that time. Because at the end of 2016, something monumental happened. We got the first ever VTuber, Kizuna Ai. 
Although we saw other virtual creators on the YouTube platform before this, Kizuna Ai was different. She wasn't a pre-rendered animation, this was a live character being controlled via motion capture. All of a sudden, we had a virtual girl that we could interact with back and forth in real time via live streaming. You could type a message to her, if she read something funny, she'd laugh. Smiling, dancing, and singing, although her main audience was Japanese, she told us flat and clear what the future was worldwide. This entire idea of using motion capture and facial tracking to do live content didn't take long to catch on as other big-brained individuals with the right knowledge and hardware connections started their own lower-scaled personal endeavors. With Apple AR Kit face tracking's release in 2017, people were using the latest generation iPhones to do accurate and realistic facial movements outside of just crummy webcam technology. Not only was face tracking starting to become accessible, but so was body tracking and avatar control via virtual reality. In 2016, the original Oculus Rift and Vive headsets were released to the public and companies realized they could use extra Vive wand controllers on various parts of their bodies to do full body tracking. That's why in 2017, Vive took that exact same tracking tech and threw it in their Vive tracking puck that anyone could purchase. And it was such a hit that they even began selling them in exclusive bundles with headsets later on in Japan. VR chat also came out in 2017, meaning regular individuals interested in VR and virtual avatars could also throw together their own characters to inhabit and stream with, including the booming Twitch streaming platform. Though all this tech was very niche and underdeveloped at the time. However, at the end of that year, one of the most culturally significant online entertainment companies of our time was born, starting with Tokino Sora, the founding member of Hololive. Tokino Sora clearly got her hands on some virtual reality tech that you can see in her very first stream of September 2017 to a whopping 13 unsuspecting viewers. Although a bit cheesy from the lack of facial expression in finger tracking, this was pretty revolutionary as this random Japanese girl figured out how to be a VTuber without a full production team. One of her supporters joined up with her to take her idolism to the next level by partnering up with CoverCorp who were already looking to create their own VTuber applications. Together, they collaborated to create the Hololive app that December, making it possible for Tokinosora fans to view her model IRL through augmented reality. At this time, they opened up the first round of auditions to bring on more potential idols who hit off during their debuts that spring. Niji Sanji came along that time, focusing their efforts on 2D idols using live 2D versus expensive 3D models. This was also a hit, and Hololive joined suit quickly after with their first-gen idol Suisei trying a 2D model as well. All of a sudden, Japan's VTuber fanbase was exploding as fans rallied behind their favorite girls, enjoying their interactions with each other and supporting their favorites. They blew up so immensely, in fact, that their popularity spread overseas as clip channels would take funny stream moments and translate them into English subtitles. And boy, it was at the start of everything. The VTuber niche was quietly exploding in Japan, and VR chat was bringing in Western attention to the very tiny first wave of English VTuber streamers. People were becoming self-aware that anyone could become a virtual girl. The interest was slowly snowballing until the next big blow-up happened, Project Melody. I saw Project Melody, the virtual cam girl blowing up on the internet, which I saw as my opportunity to weigh in on making my first video. There was a spur of general excitement and controversy from angry IRL cam girls getting mad, but soon everyone wanted to know how they could start VTubing too. The Western interest in Hololive spurred the first round of English Hololive auditions in May, and then when they debuted that summer, everybody wanted a slice of that cake. Suddenly, what was a niche community of English VTubers was filled with hundreds and then thousands of debuts, including the likes of monster streamers such as Pokimane. The new Hololive members accrued hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and Bargra hit a million subscribers within a month of her debut, becoming the fastest growing VTuber of all time. It literally was a virtual girl explosion. You had the likes of homegrown VTubers like Iron Mouse joining together with VR chat streamers to create the shoujo as the obsession rose out of control. Commissions were hot in command, and thousands of dollars are being thrown at lewd kawaii queens taking advantage of parasocial relationships oh online, and oh, that brings us to the next section, virtual girl relationships. I just think it's way more 
connected to internet culture than a human. With characters, we're actually coming back to what's true online, which is expressing yourself through whatever form of identity you want. This is Christopher Travers, who runs virtualhumans.org. As an expert in all things virtual people related, I wanted to dig into his opinion on the subject. There's this tendency, this propensity, that a female character is going to do better because of the demographic's interest in those characters. Effectively, you're elevating these very cute girls, and that bleeds up into anime culture. It bleeds up now into VTuber culture, which has its origins in anime culture. I think it's tending towards celebrating the female form in the, it, as characters. A large portion of VTuber appeal comes from their idealism and escape from reality they provide. I mean, who doesn't love a cute meme lord shitposting anime character all without the intimidation and fear of rejection that IRL girls have to offer? So what ends up happening is for those who can't find fulfillment in their social lives or they can't find fulfillment in their dating lives, they turn to corners of the internet. So those who are very deeply interested in anime and cartoons aren't turning to pornography. They're turning to relationships and turning to characters to fulfill them. Uh, the internet is and virtual reality is designed to simulate reality. The laws of respect of other humans still apply. You know, it's good to find escapism in virtual reality, but understand like you're a human and the people you meet are also humans. But when we backtrack to characters like Lil Michaela or Miku, there is no person behind the curtain. Your relationship to these females is entirely an illusion. And at this point, we enjoy them from a distance as celebrities or models the same way that we do with other celebrities or models. But what about AI? Voice assistants have been a thing since Apple added Siri to the iPhone in 2011. Alexa and Cortana followed suit in 2014. Although Cortana is based off of a character from Halo, neither Siri nor Alexa have physical character representations of themselves. These virtual girls are used by almost everyone in some form in our day-to-day -day life, but it's not even really a question that we don't typically form emotional relationships with them, and that's definitely by design. Now meet Azuma Hikari, the virtual maid AI girlfriend of your dreams. Well, at least if you're Japanese. She's the face and main selling point of the 2016 product, Gatebox, which is designed to be something like an Amazon Alexa that does tasks and tells you the weather, except for she's your virtual girlfriend who will also give you emotional support and send you text messages while you're away that she can't wait for you to get home, Aww. While Hikari is the face of Gatebox, they also collaborate to allow other custom characters as well without the AI chat features. And this is all possible with the price of about $3,000. Bruh. But if you're feeling really spicy, in 2021, they announced the Gatebox Grande, where you can take your virtual characters and make them human size. While it's currently meant for things like virtual fashion events, I'm sure that you could imagine the other intended use cases as well. If you thought this was just another weird Japanese thing for a small niche of lonely guys, you'll be shocked to what I talk about next, which is a Chinese AI girlfriend chatbot that as of all the way back in 2020, has interacted with over 600 million individual users. Zhao Ice. Users have conversations with her over chatting apps like WeChat, and the amount of data that Zhao Ice has been trained on through these chatbots interactions is so substantial that she has replaced the need for a female companion in an unthinkable amount of male users' lives. She will flirt with you, text you completely uninitiated, or just be an emotional companion serving as a therapeutic life counselor. But the chatbot doesn't hold back anything it learns, which includes realistic sexting. Yes, the sexual encounters are so convincing that males even report her being their first true love. And the data supports this. The majority of users are lower class males with insecurity issues who are generally just less well off or confident. But all of a sudden, they go from feeling unwantable to having feelings of being desired and loved by a female companion, an innate human need that's been yet to be fulfilled previously in their lives. In recent years, Zhao Ice has expanded to the point that you can fully customize their appearance and gender. During the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics, some of the gold medalist athletes even used a version of Zhao Ice that acted as a handsome young man coach in their training. However, Zhao Ice got to the point that she was so realistic that the company actually was forced to dumb her down because she started engaging in sensitive political and adult conversations. 
Of course, your conversations with Zhao Ice are monitored, and there are significant questions to be raised about data usage gained from these AI interactions just in general. However, in comparison, here in the West, you might have heard about Replica AI, which is arguably way lamer in comparison, but still has been a hot topic for the unknowing Western users. It reached 10 million users worldwide during the pandemic, being one of the most well-known chatbot apps right now. However, what's interesting about these companions you custom make in Replica is that you can actually interact with them in virtual reality. I'm not gonna lie that the last time I checked out the Replica AI app, I was certainly not impressed. And I can't say that the adaptation of the VR version looks much better, but the fact that you can interact with your companion in virtual reality segues into a whole nother topic of its own. I am obviously a virtual reality channel, and I think VR is one of the most compelling technologies available now with the most incredible potential. And this goes for augmented reality and mixed reality as well, which bring the virtual world into the physical one. Here in VR chat, we interact with virtual avatars while in virtual avatars ourselves, which ends up feeling extremely human at its core. But of course, VR has <coughs> other uses as well that rank very highly on the Steam VR store page, which includes interacting with females in other specific ways. This really isn't that shocking as it is just an extension of what the internet is already, but I think the interesting speculation comes in with mixed reality. This is where all the topics we've brought together thus far combine into one controversial light, hyper-realistic, simulated, real-world partners. All the examples of virtual girls we've covered thus far are very different from one another in application, and not a single one of them can fulfill the needs for a true human relationship replacement. But if we put different parts together, we can do a mind experiment to imagine what a potential future could look like, using empathic AI, customizability, cross-platform compatibility, and haptic touch. We've already seen how convincing chatbots can get based off of Zhao Eyes, so if we imagine that this technology continues to spread worldwide, at some point in the near future, AI will become so advanced that when we interact with it, it feels and speaks no differently than a human would. Whether that's Unreal Engine, MetaHumans, or VRChat anime girls, we should be able to customize them as well to take any kind of form we desire. Whether that's their hair color, bus size, personality traits, or anything else that can be directly shaped to our personal will. Now from here, we can start interacting with this companion at any given point via various technology methods. Whether that's texting them from your phone, displaying their hologram in your home, or going out on an augmented reality date to Taco Bell. It's totally up to you. I personally have used the world's top virtual reality haptic and force feedback technology this year at CS and AWE, and it is absolutely mind-boggling how realistic haptic technology can get. In a Ready Player One future, you could even imagine how realistic, intimate interactions with your virtual partner can get inside of virtual reality where you feel everything. At this point, what good is a physical relationship? If every emotional or physical need you can have can be satisfied with a virtual partner, why would you need a real one? Although there's some pretty obvious answers here, I do believe there's a large demographic of people who will genuinely prefer this option versus the hardships of maintaining a sound IRL relationship, which is one of the hardest but most fulfilling challenges in a human's life. But what are the social consequences? Like, will population loss actually be a harm? But if someone can't find a human relationship, what's the harm in them developing a virtual one that satisfies those same needs? But then again, is removing the human from human relationship unethical or a danger to future society? There's so many questions to ask once the store is opened and it's already starting to crack. This is all totally plausible to happen in our lifetimes, at least to a decent extent. If people are already developing life-changing relationships to chatbots and donating their entire wallets to VTubers, this foreshadows the brink of a new generation of society unlike anything we've seen before in the history of humanity itself. I don't know if any of these things really fit into our current understanding of humanity, but it's definitely time we start facing some of these important questions before it happens. Starting with or virtual girl obsession. 
Sorry to all the virtual dudes out there, I technically jiffed you out on making this video, but I just find the female form to be so much more culturally significant in every single situation that I covered in this video. There are some male examples of every single one of these points, and I highly encourage you to go out and seek them. Next month is the release of the virtual reality show VR Chat Studio, and we're going to be hosting Omega Big events there. August is the last month to get your own star in the lobby with your name on it by joining my virtual VIP Patreon tier to show me support in making more videos just like this. More details are coming in a few days, so join my Discord and Twitter for new updates. Comment your own thoughts and experiences below, like whether or not you'd date an AI. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the virtual reality show for more content just like this. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I've been your host, Fia, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Special thanks to this month's Patreon members and virtual VIPs, Alagrief, Angel, Black Amethyst, Christopher Brown, Clarity, Dark Punk, Dutech, GS Genesis, MK Maestri, Kaze Ryu, Neoplasm, Nair, Nightmare35, Prism, Rai600333, Score Maller, Snake8Head, Truth Seeker, Sally Wasituna, Yamazakura, 